I started a company a couple of years ago, uh, about five years ago, uh, called ForgeWork, which is a software and open source company. Um, came out of Sun Market Systems. Um, been working with a lot of identity, security, and privacy software for a long time. Everything is open source. And today I'm going to talk about what I'm doing in San Francisco. <clears throat> it's kind of like strange how far you have to travel to get a decent job. And now we only have one slide. Oh, look at this. Okay. So I'll give you a little bit of background on, on the project. So um, this actually started many, many years back um, by the chief innovation officer in, in the mayor's office in San Francisco, one guy called Jay Nate. And he said, come on, guys, we, we are kind of like in Silicon Valley. There's a lot of entrepreneurs here. There's a lot of technology companies. There's a lot of startups. And we have a lot of challenges. Why don't we just bring these together and, and uh, <coughs> basically make a long hackathon out of it? So what they did as a test um, was looking on the airport in San Francisco, the terminal, the international terminal. How can we using security identity uh, and IoT technology to make it easier for navigate around the, um, the airport? And the, uh, the, they, found that they got 16 different proposals from startups and, and, and established companies. After 16 weeks, the whole solution was built and in, in production. So <clears throat> if you now go to the terminal, you can actually use, by the use of your phone and iBeacon, you can navigate around the, the whole airport. So being so successful with that project, it's not working at least. Ah, look at this. So uh, what I said, the, um, this was the start of something bigger. So, um, so it's a two-year hackathon they're putting together, and the next big happening over there is on, on the 16th and the 17th of June. So they bring in six cities. Uh, it's Los Angeles, it's Copenhagen, it's, I think it's Chicago, and also we're trying to build a link in, into Stavanger to, to continue this kind of like collaboration between the governments, the cities, the startups, and known technology companies. The thing about the smart city is that it, it, it has all the different facets. It's not only one vertical. It, it has moving cars, it has buildings, it has bridges, it ha has health issues. So kind of like if you can solve IoT and security around a smart city context, you pretty much have covered most of the, the verticals. So that's why we thought that was an interesting scenario as, as a use case. Bunch of people involved um, from uh, <coughs> the mayor's office and also from, from startups, small startups, big companies. So you see it's a, it's a very big mix. And how many of you have been in San Francisco? Fantastic. And how many have been on the Palace of Fine Art? Only one, okay. You don't care about much about art, do you? <clears throat> anyway, it's one of these historic buildings in San Francisco, was, which was built like 100 years ago, um, and they're turning the whole building into one gigantic demo room. So there were all the sensors, all the industries coming together, what they know called the um, innovation hangar. I've been working with the Identity, Security, and Privacy Advisory Board, and there are other groups kind of like looking more into the, the legal side, the connectivity, so there are different um, advice we boil together and trying to come up with best practices. Everything is open source, all the materials come in criteria, so nothing is kind of, I, I, don't, I mean, everything is shared, so it's easy for other people to, to reuse. If you look on the IoT technology stack, uh, there's, there's a big change because it's, I don't, see no, I don't see any single company that actually covered the whole stack from the, from the sensor itself to the embedded OS to the whole connectivity to the, the applications, the, the, uh, the business intelligence on the end. It's a pretty broad stack, which is forming a lot of new ecosystems to be able to, to work together. The, um, but what also is very interesting is that one thing which is pervasive 
is securing an identity. It spans all the layers. You need security from end to end, from the chip itself, from the thing to the application. A little bit uh, about identity. I think most of the people, at least from, from where I'm coming from, think about identity related to humans, um, like username and password, yada yada. Or everybody has been dealing with enterprise use cases and entering systems uh, information into to HR systems. But <coughs> identity is basically just a, a collection of attributes that are describing something. So everything has an identity, being a, a mobile phone, being a car, being a traffic controller, kind of like its firmware, its capabilities, it's just attributes. So there's no difference of managing um, things than humans, and everything is just objects, and you're building relationships between them. And I think, <coughs> giving a couple of examples, um, uh, a variable, um, connecting a variable uh, or a pacemaker to, to an application to, to, um, to a person is extremely important. And if you don't know that the thing itself, uh, if you don't know the identity, that the device is actually authentic, you kind of like, you maybe no, don't want to connect it to, to an app, to the internet. So what we've been doing is taking uh, all the different identities of a variable, of a car, connecting it to a user, into an application and services, and build relationships between them. Mm. This is a pretty dynamic uh, <coughs> world, and a lot of the relationships and data actually changes over time. Think about a car. When the car first is, is, uh, is built, the whole identity and the relationships is to the manufacturer. But as it moves on, it goes into the dealer, and then the dealer sells it to somebody, so maybe it becomes your car. And the, the, the car gathers a lot of data over time, and some of that data maybe you want to protect for yourself, maybe you don't want your wife to know where your car is going. Uh, on, on some of the data, also, uh, you, you would like to pass on. So if you um, sell the car, the data the car has about how often it has been serviced is something that should follow the car. But you're changing the relationship between a thing, application, and a service. Typically in identity space, and uh, those guys that um, love LDAP, we like to organize everything like like a hierarchy, like, like this one, and kind of like have an organization unit on the top, yada yada, you, you know how this works. The problem with a new space is that this is totally broken. The dynamics, the context, the way of all these relationships between identity of things, human services, requires a totally new application infrastructure. Switching to security, and I'm probably the stupidest guy in this room when it comes to security, so no questions afterwards. <clears throat> but there's a couple of things I see, and I've also been working in the, uh, these projects, of course. Security is the top barrier to, to, uh, to adoption. People are finally getting it. And I like the slide that I got from a good friend of mine, who is the chief uh, security officer for NVIDIA. <coughs> This is kind of like how the industry has been dealing with IoT and security. They kind of like been waiting and waiting and waiting, and now finally we come into the, the F um, cycle. <coughs> so finally people are starting to understand that this is seriously, and you need it to be able to do something out of value. And one trend that I see is that I said, security needs to be an end-to-end -end solution. And from new building br uh, bricks, uh, you see people are starting to make security as part of the infrastructure itself. This is just a picture from, um, <coughs> from last year where uh, Samsung announced their new kind of like building bricks for IoT. The Arctic one there is, is kind of like smaller than your thumbnail and typically goes into um, to variable things. And you have other that have more processor power, depending on if you want to do drones or cars or trains or whatever you want to do. Common for them is that the, they have their own crypto engine on board on the chip, uh, uses secure elements, and they use stuff like the trusted execution environment for secure app, app on the chip itself. So designing security in lower is, is the trend that we see more and more. 
The last part, privacy. The <coughs> most people kind of like get this creepy feeling, Big Brother see you, kind of when we talk about privacy. Um, I mentioned that I used to work for Sun Microsystems, and, uh, and uh, Scott McNeely was kind of famous for his, his comments, and he said just, privacy, get over it. You don't have any privacy. And of course, uh, after Snowden, a couple of other things also changes, uh, change it. But what we have been focusing on is the other part of privacy, is the consent part. Because if you have control of what you do, you can do a lot of good things with your data. You might want, might want to uh, share your data uh, to your doctor or share kind of your financial um, information to, um, to your auditor. So <clears throat> what's been happening over the last, uh, actually, five years is um, uh, a new international standard. Uh, we already had stuff like OpenID Connect and OAuth for authentication and authorization. So on top of OAuth, what we're now building is the new protocol called Juma, which is short for User Managed Access, which is all about sharing your data, transparency, and you have the chance to actually see who you're sharing, uh, sharing your, your data and attributes with. You can constrain it, you can revoke it, and you have control of it. So um, if you are interested in that space, you should check out the um, Kantara initiative, um, Yuma Space. Last slide, and I think I'm still <coughs> within time. Um, Internet of Things is, if you say it extremely easy, it's all about little things, gathering data, and send it back to, to big data. That's kind of like more or less what it's all about. But if you add the identity to the data, you also have that it's secure, so you know where it's coming from, and you have consent to using the data, Imagine the value you can get out of those applications instead of just a big uh, uh, bulk of data which is, has no privacy or um, no identity tied to it. So thank you very much.